So today I'm going to be doing an island beach scene, a tropical island, and I'm going to take you through this project step by step using my Viva Colors color sheet and some just some basic supplies, water, brush, Canson paper. This is a, a paper by Canson. It's watercolor paper and it's cold press. It's 140 pound or 300 gram, which holds a nice amount of water, which we're going to need for this project because we'll be doing some wet on wet technique, which I'll be showing you. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is sketch out this beach scene. And it's a very, very simple, simple matter in this case. As for landscapes and seascapes, I'm gonna start with the horizon line, which is about two thirds down from the top of the page and going at a slight angle. And I'm just going to just put a very light line. It doesn't have to be straight or perfect. It's just a guide to keep you on track while you are, while you're getting your paint down on the paper. So it's not ridiculously out of place, but I wanna emphasize that I don't operate on perfection or sticking to techniques 100%. To me, it's really about the expression. And so today I want you to be kind to yourself and let yourself flow and paint and experiment. And don't worry about if it doesn't come out like mine or like you wanted. Just go for it and see what happens. Have fun with this. So I've sketched the horizon line, which is a little bit at an angle, maybe a little too much at an angle for me. Have to be here with that. And then we have some trees at the top, which I am not going to sketch out. I'm going to use my paintbrush to grab those. The only thing I'm going to do right now is sketch the shape of this shoreline, which is kind of like a crescent shape and go across the paper like this at an angle to kind of mimic what the shoreline's doing and then there's a little bit of a water line over here but you know what another thing i wanted to talk to you about is the fact that you can take photos you're working from and instead of focusing on being exactly accurate with them is be a little bit creative use your creative license to change things around I do that often and then it helps you practice not copying things exactly, which is such a useful skill now with copyright laws and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that dark blue stripe out of the sketch and I am ready to go. That is all I'm going to do to help guide my brush. So I'm going to move these off my main area and I'm going to start by using my Persian blue, which is over here, to start with the sky. So I know we have leaves at the top, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. I'm going to put a layer of blue and I'm going to lay down some water first, not too much. I don't want to get my paper too wet right off the bat, but just a little bit of water. I live in the desert, so my paper dries extremely fast and hence, so I don't even bother wetting the whole area because it's gonna dry before I can even get to it. And the, the air is just so dry here, but you may live in a humid place and you maybe you can do that. I also watch the amount of water I put on because I don't want my paper to buckle too much. Now this paper takes a lot of water very, very well, but I try to keep it, you know, I don't put any more water on than I absolutely need. So I want to go a little darker. You can, you'll notice in the image, the sky is darker at the top than it is, than it is at the bottom. So I want to make sure I get a nice amount of paint on here, but I'm not going super dark. And I don't mind layering. Like I'll, I'll go a little more conservative in the beginning and add paint as I go, rather than realize I put too much paint. So that's about a third of the sky right there. And the clouds start at about two thirds of the sky. And for that, I'm going to begin to, whoops, that's a little darker than I wanted, but that's okay. We can brush that, push that up to the top and start making some squiggle lines for the clouds. Now I'm not 
I am not copying these clouds exactly as they are in this image. I am just gonna make some squiggle lines and call it good. Add a little bit more water to my brush. I'm gonna open my, my palette that's attached to my color sheets. And you'll just notice I splashed some paint down here. So again, I am going to just blend that in and start again with another little patch of paint here. And again, I'm gonna to have to spread that out because that is way too dark. So I'm going to come over here and just begin to add some just random squiggles that sort of look like clouds. And that spot is getting a little dark right there. So I'm gonna to try to get more water here, spread that out a bit more. And make this just a little, that's a little bit more blue than I wanted. I'm gonna put this down on my palette so I can control it just a little bit better. And start squiggling around here. This is a little straighter than I wanted, so I'm gonna add some squiggles up here. The idea is to be sort of random and quick with this. Clouds are a very natural element that I don't think there's any perfection to them. I don't think there ever will be. Sometimes you see some perfect clouds, but they almost don't look real. So I am paying attention to just being as loose and sort of almost carefree with this as I can be. I'm gonna actually fill that in right there. And I'm gonna leave it at that. And as the paint, as the color just gets lighter as it goes down, so I'm gonna to begin to maybe add a little more up here and create a lighter area down here just to add a little more contrast. I wanna darken that a little bit more and then take what's left of my brush and keep it, keeping it very light and wet, I'm gonna spread that across that horizon line. Maybe add a few more squiggles as I go. I have a nice amount of clouds up here. Now you'll see some watercolor blooming forming here and that's okay, the, the, that means that the watercolor is drying in hard lines. I can leave that or I can just add a little water to gently rush those lines away so it's a little smoother. I love watercolor blooms, so I really don't mind them. I love the textures of watercolor and the things that they do. I don't have to make this look exactly like the image. I want to make this look like my impression of the image, which is, you know, my own interpretation. Now, in all of this, I'm going to leave out that peninsula on the right with all the little buildings on it, and I am not going to make that part of my painting today. That's another, another way to make this painting your own and uh, make it unique. Just fill in here. I'm sort of going all the way to the edge, but I'm leaving a little bit of space just so I don't go off the edge. And maybe a little more, a little more color over here. A bit too much. I can just spread that around make this a bit more squiggly. And just like that, we have some nice, soft clouds in our sky. I'm getting most of this blue off and I'm gonna go in and lighten this just a little bit. If things aren't turning out exactly like you want them, you can go back and there are some things you can do after the fact to alter how it looks like these very dark and hard lines, but I don't mind them, so I'm gonna leave that. And I'm gonna move on, while that is drying, I'm gonna move on to the sand. And one of the keys and the secrets of keeping a painting going is working at opposite ends at the same time to give the other a chance to dry. It doesn't always work completely, but it's a great technique and I am very impatient, so I really, I really like the idea of keeping my painting going. So now I'm gonna start with the sand and although the sand is quite light, I am going to take my, my burnt umber and make it quite thin 
and it's going to be a little darker than what's in the image but again i don't mind that i like the idea that most people know the color of sand and i think this will look very much like that so i'm going to go ahead and this is just the first layer so i'm just putting it all the way through following my pencil line And while that is drying, I don't want to paint right up next to it. So I am going to come back for another layer of texture on this sand and I'll show you how to do that. This is pretty dry. Oh, I am going to use my smaller round brush. So I have a medium round brush and a small round brush. Standard sizes are not standardized, but this is a seven and this is a three. These are made by Wonder and Weiss, and they're just simple synthetic brushes. They're not expensive, but I like them because they, they keep their shape and they work well for me. So now going to my green, which are back here, I'm going to take this sap green and I'm going to start painting some strokes. Need a little more water in my brush to keep the point very sharp. And I'm going to start to paint some palm fronds. Uh, this is gonna, again, just gonna be the first layer. And right over the blue. Make sure your brush is nice and saturated. This sap green has a bit of an olive in it, which will be perfect for the color of these palm tree leaves or fronds and trying to stay as close as I can to the line of my sky not necessary because these pages come out right there but I like the way that looks and I don't want to make this look too perfectly straight so I'm going to stop there now you'll notice right away I've already changed the direction that this palm frond is going and, and that's fine. I'm just going to keep on going. Here's another one underneath it. And it's kind of going down. So I'm going to stay with that shape. But I don't, ha I don't expect this to be perfect and I don't need it to be perfect. So that is not the point. The point is to have a fun time and have a beautiful painting at the end. And we can achieve that in many ways. All right, I'm going to move on to the other side of the painting. And I'm going to do one over here, as I see in the image. And that's a good first layer. And then I'm going to do maybe just one at the top, because I don't have to get into all of these details as I mentioned. Now my brush is a bit wet for keeping this a little more accurate so I'm going to let some of that water play out as I'm painting and I'm going to go back with a darker layer and go over that. So this doesn't have to be exactly as I see in the image as I mentioned and I'm just going to actually just let that dry just as is again although i didn't put all the palm fronds in it's a nice balanced composition i have some over here some over here i have one in, in the middle and it's it's a nice presentation for that now if this one is painted over the clouds which makes it look like it's closer so that's one of the tricks of distance in art now moving on, this is dry and this is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and paint my water, which I'm going to be using the Viridian. And it goes light to dark, so I'm going to start here and keep it kind of light. Now there is a little space here that is a little white where the water has kissed the shore here, so I'm going to try to stay away from my brown just a bit. And Boy, that's way too dark. These paints are so beautifully saturated. I have to have to watch how much paint I'm putting on. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this all the way back to the top. 
or more accurately, the horizon line. And I do want it dark up there, so I am going to go ahead and take this darker portion and just run it right over the sky to create some contrast there. This is going to be the darkest part of the ocean. Now, in the photo, it's a darker blue. This is more of a green blue, or blue green as it were. But I want to differentiate this color from this color a lot more than I can if I use the same blue. So, I am going to go ahead and fill this in, keeping the dark at the top and leaving it very light in the bottom. So you can see the contrast of how the shallow water, the color is different. Leaving some white here along the shore to allow for some of the water breaking onto the sand. And I'm just taking just my damp brush and just rubbing it on that edge so it just ever so lightly blends with the rest of the watercolor. Again, I don't mind the, the watercolor blooms or harsh edges, but just in the spirit of showing you how I do this, I'm just going to blend that gently. And maybe I'll add just a little more color to that. Okay, here's a boo-boo. I just dropped some paint here, so I'm going to take a clean towel and immediately pick that up, and it didn't do any damage. However, if it did, I could take a wet brush and give it a little rub until the paint lifts. So I'm just going to add just a little more color. This color is really the star of this painting, this beautiful aqua gem of a color. It's just really makes the water stand out. And I think that's enough. I always come back and with another layer and do some more. And I want to make sure all of that blue is out of my brush. Two jars really help me keep my brushes clean so I don't have to get up in the middle of a painting, which is really nice. And now that this very light coat is dry, I'm going to go back to my brown, my burnt umber, and I'm going to just add some really light little marks like print. These are not as light as I wanted, but they should dry a lot lighter than, they're, than you see them here. Watercolor tends to dry lighter than you put it down, and I don't want these looking so exact. I want them to look like they're going every which way. I might have to lighten some of these with a little water and you can see how the water can just take the edge off of some of that color and then I can use some of it over here. It's looking better. Now I'm going to make some that are coming over here. that are over here. I'm going to make these smaller as this goes off into the distance. Another trick of distance with painting. Make your items smaller as they go further away from you. Again, not exact, but it gives some nice texture to the sand. Some of these are probably a little harder than what I wanted, so I'm just going to go through and just lighten them a little bit more. It's so easy to judge your painting as you're painting it. My advice to you is don't change too much until you stop and stand back and take a real look. And you might be surprised at how much better you think it is. It's ironic. So I think I'm gonna leave this white just the way it is because it's quite light in the image and it, it might mimic some frothing of the wave, although it's very gentle, it's just quite nice this way. And I'm going to go back to the palm trees with my green. 
I don't want my brush to be too wet because I want this to be super dark, especially going over these lighter colors. That's not wet enough. If it's a little, like there's textures in it, it's not wet enough. I'm just gonna go over some of these lighter strokes to show kind of some shadow and light. It's so easy to accomplish this and it makes your painting look so much more authentic and believable. So I'm just gonna try to keep these light and just going over some of these strokes to give the illusion that you've got some that are facing the sun, some that are away from the sun. If you have too much water, it won't be dark enough. And if you don't have enough water, your paint won't move freely enough. So it's a nice balance to practice. Paint a little line in the middle. That's enough to give it some dark and light. I'm gonna do a little bit here. You can go over some of these paintings that you do a few times and the darker the detail you're adding, you can make it smaller and smaller so that the light shows through. And this is what differentiates watercolor from other kinds of paintings. You start light and then you get darker. And that's enough. That's just enough to add a little bit of detail for the eye to focus on. I'm going to very quickly add some leaves over here with this light green, different kind of green, so it'll give you give the eye the idea that it's a completely different shrub. And, and as I'm painting super light, I'm going to add some darker strokes on top. So I'm just painting some blobs, but they are leaf shapes. Leaves are a lot easier to paint than many think because it just doesn't take much to replicate these shapes at all. Add some darker detail to show the, that shadow and light. The brain loves picking up differences, and that's what makes a painting interesting compared to one that isn't as interesting as you have a lot of things for the brain to process, and it doesn't want to look away because it's still processing and processing. So that's another really great little tip. Now, the last detail I want to do is add one of these canoes to this painting, and that will be our little finishing touch. I'm not going to put both of them in. I'm just going to put one, and it might be a bit bigger than what's in the image. Again, that's our choice. We are the artist. We can show this however we like. And I love the shape of this curvy looking craft over here. And I'm just going to put a little one for the back. I didn't even sketch this out. I could have, but I didn't really think I needed to. I wanted it to kind of be spontaneous. So here I am being spontaneous. The bottom doesn't have to be straight because the water could be lapping on it from different directions. More of a bow here. A little mass coming down. That's not as dark and thin as I wanted, but that's okay. I'm gonna darken it and try not to get it any thicker. Another little mass down here. And it's a little taller up here than it is in the back. So I'm just going to add a little more thickness there, make this just a little taller, add a little bit of a shape at the end. And as that's drying, I'm going to take a look at my painting. I'm gonna stand back and just see if I wanna change anything. There's some imperfections. But again, that adds to the charm of the project. Um, I could make this a little bit darker by using some slate black, but that is just, at this point, not necessary. It's just something I could do. If I add this on top and don't paint through all the way, the brown will show through and give it a little texture, which is kind of fun. I just want to add just a little bit more Viridian over here just to make it 
slightly darker. It's not reading well as I'm looking at this painting from a few feet away. And so I'm just going to add very gently some color here so that you can see it a little bit better. I love this over here. I'm not going to change that at all. And I think that's just enough to make it show up a little bit better. I'm not going to worry about leaving white over here because that's a distance that I don't think is going to make enough of a difference. And I might just blend these out just to taste. And I have to be careful that this blends a little bit better. And we're done. All right. And that's it for the Island Beach Project. I hope you enjoyed it.